Figma is about to release something super interesting. We have some leaks to look at, Framer and Webflow are probably in trouble. Figma could potentially even end them because Figma is now officially entering the world of creation, not just design, but actually creating and developing the designs that you made inside of the app. All of that using AI with your design. So let's look at the leaks. So here we have Jane with these leaks and she's famous for figuring out these uh, leaks. We'll talk about how she does it, but let's zoom in and see what is there. So here we see the Figma looking like app, but then we have build and publish in one place with Figma sites. So they are called Figma sites, try it out. And here we see we have breakpoints, we have multi users, things that we expect from Figma, but there are some new things that we don't know. For example, this gear icon is new, this, I don't know, it looks like it could be AI, but AI is something else, components, I don't know. Add a new, probably not just elements, but maybe designs that you have already made. And what's really interesting is to see if they are going to bundle this with the Figma design tool, or will it be separate kind of like Figma slides, and then you import things in it? I don't know, but looking at here, yes, we are here, we see that this is the, the gear icon. We have some settings. This is super cool. Here we have code, create code layer. So this sounds like adding functionality on top of your design and potentially this is done using um, using AI because it says generate an idea and this is component. So code components in your design to make make everything functional, I guess. Then let's look at these. We have play with code on the canvas. Does that mean that we will have a preview? Yes, like I see a preview here. I can barely read it. That's super cool, like to generate and also preview it. But I, I just want to know how it works in conjunction with my design. I design it and then can I like generate code for my design? Probably potentially publish to the web, obviously. And these are called preview.site. Like these are the, uh, the not framer, the Figma sites. And we'll, we'll check these as well. There are a few tweets about it. Uh, preview before publish, yeah, obviously. Then we have publish site. So this is the publishing uh, module. Then here we have get started with blocks and design responsively and responsibly. Uh, so these are super cool. All right, we have another really cool tweet from Jan showing a few Figma sites. Just run a site, uh, preview.site, uh, Google search, and then he spotted these builds. These are sites built with the uh, Figma and you see here with React and props. So Figma is using React to basically build up the website. And there are a few other examples, like super cool that these are built with Figma, but they are not available anymore. Like if you click on them, it says site not found. And I tried to do the same site, um, preview.site on Google. It could not find anything. I don't know how they found them, but it seems like these are really legit uh, leaks. Another small leak is about the auto layout and grid. So until now we had only Flexbox, which is great for, let's say, uh, one di directional designs, but with grid you can make more like complex designs, something that we've had in Webflow for years now, and it's super helpful, but now it's coming to Figma as well, super welcome. And all of this is happening, by the way, in just a few days times. So by the time you watch this, um, I don't know if maybe these are out, but we will have a Figma conference config in about two weeks. And here we have two other screenshots again from Jane. These are also super interesting, especially this one. We see the AI beta here and then what do you want to make? Sign up flow, dashboard, data visualizer. This is like crazy. You can do these in Figma. Like just imagine design them and then generate the code with AI. The reason why this is so cool, if we look at the bottom side here, we see paste an existing design or image 
describe your idea and here we see the model sonnet 3.7 something that pretty much everybody loves and then superbase so you can connect even databases or like backends this is like insane you might be asking are these legit how did she even find them so basically when a company like figma they release it they are about to release something they share it internally and in order to share it internally they have to make it available for some certain users so what she does she digs in the code when she signs in for figma or any other tool and then she basically tries to see if there is any api or any network request and there is any hint of a tool or like a feature that doesn't exist yet or like ui that is not being used and basically she follows these and that's just the, the rough idea that I have I don't know much more like exactly she follows these and then tries to uh, mimic that she's one of these test groups and get these uh, features uh, available for herself that's my understanding of how she does it and now let's talk about something else uh, something that makes all of this so exciting to me uh, I want to talk about the process of creating things so when you create a site, a web app, a marketing website, anything, we design something and then the design process goes on and then we end at dev and maybe we end at QA and then publish and launch whatever. But what we are talking about here now is design to dev and potentially before design, you could talk about idea as well. So we go from idea to design and development. What's really interesting is that in a lot of cases, this is not actually true. In a lot of cases, what we have is something like this. So if I copy this and bring it here, what we have, we have something like this, a zigzag of design, dev, and basically ideation. So let's say on this side, we put in design and idea, and this side we can put dev and QA. So we go from idea to developing the idea, designing and then QA and things like this. It goes like a zigzag. And my favorite way of doing this is actually going with dev, well, <laughs> idea first and then dev right away and then design. So basically doing it like this. So you come up with an idea and then instead of designing it, you create a prototype or an MVP. You make something in code, something functional, something that you can click and potentially build on top of it. And then you figure out the design and then you go basically the same thing. This is related because Figma owns the start of the process. They own the idea, basically the fig jam, at least that's what they are trying, uh, but also the design. They don't own the development part, but this is where they are entering the game and they are trying to create this loop essentially because you can now generate the idea using AI, make a prototype and then design it and then give the design back to the model to improve it and build on top of it and then publish it. So that's the entire basically life cycle that Figma is trying to own. And I think this is going to be really, really interesting. I'm a heavy Webflow user. I spend most of my time in Webflow and also in Figma to manage things, manage ideas, designs, and things like this. And I could actually see a future where I just spend more and more and more time inside of Figma. And with that, you might say, well, somebody might be a designer who wants to spend more time designing, somebody else who wants to do more development. I myself, I like both. And we actually have a term called design engineer. This is like an actual role and it's a unicorn type of role. It's somebody who can design and also do engineering and development. Just to be clear, I'm neither of those exactly and I'm trying to become this role. I'm trying to become a design engineer because I'm interested in both. I have a really good eye for design and I have a very deep interest for the technical part. And I think what Figma and what AI is doing is exactly what I need. It's not there yet. Everything that we hear about these AI tools at this point is still like a gimmick and a toy and basically for prototyping. 
I don't do any client work, like the complete client work with these tools because they are just simply not good enough for that. But it's starting to get more interesting, something that I can basically start with and potentially stick with and develop on top of it. And I think Figma here is in a really good position. Framer, I think, is really in trouble. Webflow is maybe I'm biased because I use Webflow and I love Webflow. Webflow is in a different league still because they allow you to have so much development control and so much design control. So they might not be in trouble just yet. It would be great to see them also going this direction and allowing you to create components with AI. So that would be super duper interesting. All right, this was it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about all of this, about AI, about Figma. Are you as excited as I am about this feature? Uh, let me know in the comments. We'll chat and talk to you later. Thank you for watching and see you around. Bye-bye.